Thank you very much. Um, so, dear guests, thank you very much for the opportunity of uh, presenting here my position. So, the title of my presentation is fairly simple. It's a basically overview of some successes and threats we are facing in Slovakia. And given my economic background, I, I try to approach this topic uh, with the data, as well, usually. Uh, so I'll try to tell you some interesting stories of Slovakia, but uh, these da uh, data will support that stories. And uh, hopefully uh, it will be presented in a way that, that the countries in the Western Balkan can actually take some inspiration, let's just say it. Uh, okay, so thank you very much for this, and let's just start. Uh, I don't want to keep you away from your lunch, so it will be fairly, uh, fairly quick. Overview, uh, so motivation was just the, not to plainly rep uh, reporting the data here, but rather give you these interesting stories from the experience and uh, basically you can just see some kind of uh, SDGs I paid attention to uh, in preparing this presentation. So uh, to address the elephant in the room, we always have to start with the emission reduction, right? Uh, so as Slovakia as any other country in the Europe and probably also in the world. We have some kind of uh, medium and long-term goals in what we want to achieve in terms of emission reduction. And our goal, the medium term or short term, the medium term goal is to reduce our emissions of greenhouse gases uh, up to year 2030 uh, by 55% uh, given the levels of 1990. Right, so that's our short term, our medium term goal. And then we have the long-term goal, which is uh, basically shared in the Green Deal. Uh, which is the carbon neutrality for the uh, country and Europe as well. Okay, uh, so how we are doing in that? Uh, so this is the data for Slovakia. Um, we have very, uh, I would say, we are lucky that we are actually comparing the situation to the year 1990 because uh, Slovakia actually didn't exist by the time. That's the first thing. We, we were established in 1993. And the second thing is the structure of our industry and structure of our economy in the year 1990 was very, very different from, from, from what is it right now. And that actually helps us a lot because you can see that 30% of the improvement we see is actually happening in the first three years in, uh, while we are still not existing. Right? And we are comparing that to the situation in the EU 27. Uh, which is uh, displayed like the 100 EO level is um, the situation in 1990, and from then you can see the overall decrease. I actually made some, uh, so for you to better to view that, uh, I made this kind of development of Slovakia over the years, and you can see uh, the main driving factors in this overall decrease of uh, greenhouse emissions were actually the structural change. So. Whenever you have the feeling that the, you need a really a lot of money you know, to make a, some kind of a change in the economy in order to get to that point, not necessarily. Okay? You can also just change the, the structure of the economy. It's not like by force, but rather by natural, uh, natural competition and, and structural change of the economy as well. That's what we achieved, uh, at least up to the year 2010. And then we have this uh, small situation when the situation started to get worse. Right? So, so this is that area when our official documents also say that we are basically hitting that glass ceiling of what is possible given the amount of investments we are making uh, in the environmental policy. So we are achieving the limits uh, without further massive investments. So the first driving factor, as I can say, about Slovakia was in uh, terms of reducing the emissions was uh, basically changing the economy and, and focusing more on on uh, what we are good at and or reorganizing the production from heavy industries to automotive industries, which is now the, the main thing for Slovakia. Okay, so in terms of emissions, uh, we are seeing the shift in the emissions. Uh, so this is the structure of uh, greenhouse gases emissions in 1990. You can see two thirds of that is actually created in the energy, uh, energy sector, fuel combustion and uh, then you see the, the rest of it. But over the time, 15 years later, you can see the overall decrease, 10 percentage points in the energy, uh, energy sector. And, and if you go even further than that, you would see that now the energy sector is less than half of all the emissions. Uh, the only thing which is uh, slightly increasing, otherwise all of them are decreasing, is the sector of transportation, which just makes sense because uh, the traffic is getting much more frequent as it used to be. So now you can see the, the overall uh, the energy sector is uh, decreasing, but uh, overall we are making a, quite a progress. Um, what I mean by progress is that if you would just take a look on what is the level of fuel combustion emissions associated with some kind of industries, uh, 
this is how it looks like. This is when you compare the situation in 2021 compared to the 90, and you would see that more than 56% decrease over that scope of 30 years. And um, that's quite a success, right? So we have this goal of 55% overall in the economy, so our industry is already making that difference. Uh, and then when you take a look on development in individual sectors or rather industries, you would see that there are industries which are actually operating with 20% or less of emissions what they used to 30 years ago. The only difference is the, is the manufacture of iron and steel. And because we identify this as a strategic problem, I will face that problem on the next slide when I, when I will also present the solution to that. So basically, you can see the main driving factor in this is that overly we are changing the structure of the, of the economy, and that is helping us a lot uh, in achievement of, of this greenhouse gases uh, reduction. Okay, but obviously there are also threats to the to development. You cannot just uh, rely ev ev solely on on natural development. Um, so you can I can just present you a couple of things we are doing here is that the largest emittent of the greenhouse gases right now uh, uses the uh, technology which is uh, more than 100 years old. And uh, now what they are trying to do is the European Union actually established the one special fund only for the 10 countries of the, of the EU which are the worst performing in the area of greenhouse gases. And they uh, put in this modernization fund of 182 billion or something like that euro just to decarbonize the industries. Right, and we are going to use that fund uh, for changing that one only industry of producing iron and steel to help us. Also to recovery and resilience plan as, a, as the answer of European into the COVID situation helps us there as well, because that's also part of it um, for the, for the uh, ch structural change of our Slovak industry. Okay, then we have uh, not that many real coal mines, but one region in Slovakia is very special. Uh, and for a very long time, they were relying on uh, coal production and using the coal for production of energy. Uh, well, Slovakia agreed in terms with the European Union and the help from the European Union that we are going to use another mechanism from the side of the European Union. And we are going to cease the use of coal uh, produced in Slovakia as well. Uh, we are going to close down the coal power plant and we are going to build a new one, which will be much less har harmful for the environment. And the uh, European Union is actually uh, going to invest uh, almost three billion just into that one particular region to support the transition. And uh, one last thing which is important for us and which is very new is after, I don't know, at least 15 years or more, uh, we finally finished this year the new power plant, atomic power plant or nuclear power plant in Slovakia. and. Uh, if you would have any idea, like uh, that's a good plan, probably is, but typically it takes five to seven years to construct a uh, nuclear power plant. It took us uh, 15, and the initial start of the construction was in 1987. So when you think about it, it's uh, more than that, it's 35 years. Uh, but basically what's going to happen because of that, uh, Slovakia is becoming uh, the exporter of clean electricity uh, because of three quarters of the electricity in Slovakia will be produced just in the nuclear power plants. Okay, that, that was the largest private investment in the history of the country. And obviously, as always, if you prolong it for a very long time, you can see the budget increased almost three times compared to what was originally planned. Okay, so basically what I was trying to say by that slide is... Uh, European Union plays a lot, uh, a huge role in terms of uh, what is the environment change. And then uh, this is the situation in terms of what is the development of, of renewables or new, renewable source of energy in Slovakia. Slight of the improvement over the last uh, decade, but still we are saying it's quite okay because when you compare it for the rest of the V4 countries in the Central Europe, we are still outperforming them. And you would be very happy about it until you see the average of the EU, which is a little bit way above that. Okay, so the, we are some like, like, you know, Chernobyl 3.6, not great, not terrible in this area. And uh, so this is the energy mix of Slovakia, where we are getting our energy from. Uh, 25, 27% comes from the renewables in 2021. And here is that nuclear, nuclear uh, source, which is 47. After we will finish the, another nuclear plant, it will be more than 75% of it. And then we have only 14% for the gas and the coal, 3%. Um, 
So basically what we are doing in terms of uh, supporting this rene renewable energy, uh, we have several projects which are oriented on the uh, more and better adoption of the alternative source of, of energy. So we have this project which is called the Greenhouses uh, and uh, government in cooperation with European Union and funds from it, they help you to um, buy photovoltaic uh, panels, solar collectors and others. And basically what's important from it is that uh, since the 2015, when this project was established, uh, it supported almost two per or more than 2% of every household in Slovakia. All right, so quite a thing. And also guaranteed purchase for the price of electricity helped us to ensure that we have more photovoltaic uh, electric plants. Uh, the only thing which is there is the quite questionable transparency in terms of uh, licensing them because uh, right now it's estimated that 4.1 billion of euro was paid to, to, to the owners of this uh, electricity plan, uh, plants, but uh, it has very kind of questionable uh, transparency you know, with uh, links to the high level of politics. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, and uh, last thing, transport, uh, transportation emissions. Uh, uh, again, very important. We've seen that it, they increased a little bit, but uh, what we said, what is European Union very good for is that they are funding a lot of things for you. And if you would go to any major Slovak city uh, in recent uh, time, you would find out that all the trains, all the buses, all the trams are actually new and funded by the EU in order to, to uh, reduce the carbon emission. Also, we have uh, different schemes which are just emerged uh, as a response to the, to the links to the Russia and the recent war conflict. So Repower EU is just the development of the last year. Recovery and Resilience Plan is uh, on COVID. And that helps us a lot. And one thing we are basically proud of whenever we are traveling around the Europe, we are saying that since 2014, our trains are free for students and elderly people as well, promoting the promoting the, the sustainable mobility uh, for almost a decade now. Okay, so here comes the interesting story. Because the Balkans countries are not really member of EU, you have some sort of a kind of approach to the European money, but really not that much compared if you would be a regular member. But here's the thing, some things you can do even without using a lot of money. And that would be the story of waste recycling in Slovakia. For a very long time, we used to be in that position when we are always saying you have to spend a lot in order to make some kind of change. In 2022, we introduced this deposit return system for all plastic bottles and cans in Slovakia, meaning every time you purchase a drink, every time you purchase a whatever, beer or, or something else, you have to pay actually a deposit of 15 cents. Okay, and then you just bring it back and they will get, get you this 15 cents back. Uh, initially, it was doubted if, if it's going to work, just within the scope of one year, you can see we leaped from 60 to 71% of uh, returns. And we actually promised that we are going to get to the point of 90% by 2029. Now it seems like it's going to, uh, we are going to achieve that in 2025 already, right? So, and if you would say that, okay, this is way too expensive or, or somehow unattainable in these countries, the whole system actually requires 5 million euro a year from the side of Slovakia to run. And the initial investment costs were 80 million. So if you just scope it down, it would be in the, in the scope of millions, right? Uh, so not really expensive, but all very powerful kind of incentive for the customers. Uh, and yesterday when I was grocery shopping here, I also, I also noticed that you are still using a lot of these light plastic bags, right? They are banned, uh, or not banned, but there is a regulation in Slovakia that these, ba uh, these bags needs to cost at least 25 cents a piece. Uh, and for that reason, we are we reduced from 400 uh, average to like 36 or something like that. So so almost 10 times less than what we used to, right? And really, a, another kind of regulation which doesn't really cost a lot. It just helps you a lot in terms of better performing. Okay. And one last thing, which is uh, not really that costly, but helps, is that uh, we have we have uh, in Slovakia nine national parks. But uh, given the international a definition of what is the national park, you would have to have at least half of that area in the national park to be untouchable zone, right, or core zone. And for that, we have the national reform, uh, or reform of national parks with clear responsibilities and expanding that size of the national parks because up to this point, we couldn't, those national parks couldn't be really considered to be a national parks because that untouchable zone was less than 50%. 
Uh, basically, uh, you just uh, the European Union used this uh, sugar incentive that it will be part of a uh, uh, recovery and resilience plan. They said, if you are going to pass that reform, we are going to give you money. And suddenly, after 20 years of lobbying against that idea, it was promoted and adopted within the scope of one year. Okay, uh, so basically, that's another story. Sometimes you can achieve a lot of things without even using a lot of money for it. That's interesting and important. One last thing, and this is probably the last slide of mine, so, is that the energy intensity of economy, which means how much money you, or how much oil you need to use in order to produce 1,000 euro of your GDP. And uh, this would be the I ideal scenario, but this is actually Czech Republic development, okay? Uh, that would be great, because if you just compare it to Slovakia, you would see there is no such a progress in case of Slovakia as it would be uh, in Czech Republic, and even worse, Again, European Union is way, way better than us. So we are third worst in the EU, but uh, this energy intensity was stuck for a long time and it was a topic for a huge debate. Uh, but now we are expecting, this is the data up to 2021, we are expecting to, in 2022 a huge uh, improvement. And why? Because I was always thought that you always need to find some positive things in everything. So this energy crisis, which happened last year, uh, making everything so much more expensive, caused that the eight, one and only producer of aluminium in Slovakia actually ceased to operate, and decreasing the consumption of electricity in Slovakia by 8%. It has obviously a lot of uh, negative consequences in terms of, of uh, GDP, unemployment, and others, but the emissions are getting down. Uh, second thing, the largest producer of steel also shut down two out of three steel furnaces. Not really good for the economy, very good for the environment. And the last, uh, the only fertilizer producer in Slovakia also, they had to shut down the production because of energy prices for some time. So the, the disclaimer here is that the environment is probably the only beneficiary of the recent energy crisis, right? If you want to find something positive and everything, th this is the way. Okay, uh, so basically what I can conclude on this is that I was able to find these three different successes or sorts of successes. The first one was that natural change and structure, uh, structural change of the economy. The second one would be very important role of EU funds in the, uh, in the overall environmental policy. And then you have this small to no expenditures from the side of government which can deliver a lot of success. Uh, and on the other hand, we are facing some threats as always, if you have access to the EU money, uh, the local politicians tend to stop the, the expenditures from the local budget and solely relying on the EU money. So that should be omitted as well as the, some kind of political risk and lobby which is associated with every kind of political activity. Thank you very much.